But let's get into this. So we're halfway through the season. Uh, contenders and pretenders. So basically, I'm going to go team by team, Tyler. You're going to tell me, and I'm going to break this down a little bit uh, more. Can this team win the SEC championship? Can this team get to the SEC championship? And then if neither of those, they're just a pretender. So let's start out. We're going to go through the undefeateds first. And give me reasons why or what you believe about the Texas A&M Aggies. Oh, right now they are basically number one because they played three SEC games. They won all three. Uh, this team is getting better and better every single week. Their defensive line is disgusting, three deep at every position. Uh, they're and, and their uh, DBs are disgusting too. They're pretty much two or three deep at every position on the D line and defensive back core. Man, I'm a Georgia fan. I kind of wish that uh, Georgia had one or two of those Texas A&M DBs, but uh, I think this is a clear contender. They are a little bit better than what I thought they'd be. I still thought they'd be a nine and three team, especially with that schedule. But this schedule for Texas A&M is fitting to be very nice. I mean. You play LSU at home. You play Texas last game of the season at home. In between that, at Auburn, before the Texas game, that was, I thought, going to be a loss because I did expect Auburn to be a lot better. But that looks like a win now. And then at Mississippi State, I mean, where are the – at most I see two more losses. So I think Texas A&M has a great shot at getting to the SEC title game. I think they're a clear contender. Do you think they can win the SEC title game? Yes, especially with that defensive line, that defense, the best. Texas A&M has the best defense in the SEC. Uh, now, Connor Wigman's going to have to make throws. If he plays like he did against Missouri, yeah, they can they can win the SEC for sure. Yeah, so that's where I, I don't think they can win the SEC championship game. I do think they can get there. Unless Connor, if Connor Wigman does what he does versus Missouri, then they can win the SEC championship game. The problem is I don't think he will. I've seen him do that in two games. It's been Missouri and Miami. Everything else has been eh from him. Nothing great, nothing um, bad. It's just been okay. Uh, their wide receivers are better than I thought they were, uh, other than like you me, you and I have said, Mo, um, Muhammad is not showing up. I don't know what the hell is going on there. He, he I actually you saw, kind of saw in the uh, Missouri game. He got frustrated a couple times. He actually threw his helmet down on the yeah. sideline on one of those. Uh, so something is going on there, but Thomas and those guys have stepped up at wide receiver and they're playing well. Colin Klein uh, called a pretty flawless game versus Missouri, but Missouri, you and I both agree is overrated and we'll get to them actually in this list. Uh, but it does help out AM that, like you said, that schedule is very light. I actually think the hardest game other than Texas left on the schedule because it's on the road is probably South Carolina versus that defense. I think that's going to be a very interesting game. But I do think Texas A&M can make it to the SEC championship game because you can get there with two losses. Like they could lose two games versus um, certain teams and still get there. Now there's other – like at LSU, you have, to, um, you have to win that game because most likely that's going to be a tiebreaker between you two and LSU. We see their schedule and how they're playing now and how they've gotten better on defense. There's a chance they can make it too. And actually, we're already on LSU. That is the next team up. What do you think of the LSU Tigers? Well, I think they're a little bit – I think they're slightly worse than Texas A&M. But I will say this. I picked Ole Miss to win, and the game kind of went exactly how I thought, except Ole Miss found a way to lose. Ole Miss was the better team. Ole Miss was better than LSU. They were better than Kentucky as well. They just found a way to lose. That's all, all on Lane Kiffin as well as that voodoo at Death Valley. Um, but but if LSU goes undefeated at home, which is definitely a possibility, they play Alabama and uh, I think they play Oklahoma as well. I guess that's not really too big of a game, but it, it was prior to the season. But if they went out at home, they would have that win against Alabama, and then they would have to steal one from Texas A&M or Arkansas this weekend. I'm going to go with pretender, unfortunately, here, because as good as I, I want LSU to be, I just it's hard to win on the road in the SEC. And, oh, by the way, you get Arkansas, then Texas A&M back-to-back, -back, and, oh, by the way, then you play Bama. That is a tough three-game stretch. It's hard for me to see LSU win more than – one, maybe two games there, and then you have to play perfect after that as well as go with the tiebreakers. I, I, I'm going to go with Pretender, unfortunately. So I'm going to go Pretender, I guess, same thing as AM to win it. I do think they can get there. 
I said, uh, yeah, it was last week. Her- with Harold Perkins injury, I actually think that benefits them. I know it's crazy to say, but I don't think Harold Perkins is a great football player. I think he's a great athlete, and I think they were trying to fit him into their defense and make him like the star of that defense and build around or build their defense around him. And I think that was a mistake. And you saw that in the last two weeks or uh, two games, they played for South Alabama and Ole Miss. They played much better defensively. They've been way better defensively. Uh, and I agree with you. Ole Miss did um, completely blow that game. And I'm not surprised. Um, we talked about, or I talked about that too in my five takeaways. Lane Kiffin, doesn't win big football games. He hasn't. He will never. I don't believe in him. I'm completely – I was never on the train, but I'm never getting on that train. Uh, and I was never a big fan of Jackson Dart either, but LSU did pull it out. Nussmeyer, if he can just turn down some of those dangerous throws, that guy has really good arm talent. He has good wide receivers. Their offensive line is spectacular in pass protection. I think if their defense continues to trend in that right direction, I think they can get to the SEC championship game. Do I think they can win it? No, but I think they can get there. Again, mostly based off schedule. LSU and AM, if they had harder schedules, I would probably say no, but based off schedule, I think they can get there. Next up, we'll get to the last undefeated team, my Texas Longhorns. Tyler, what do you have to say about them? Yeah, that's a clear contender right there. I won't really, uh, there's nothing else I can really say other than they're the best team in college football as of right now. Um, yeah, I mean, they got a real good defense, top five in college football defensively, a real elite off- well, offensive talent, rush game. The only flaw you could maybe pick up is the uh, rush game thus far. It isn't as good as, uh, well, heck, it's nowhere near as good as what it was last year, but it's serviceable. And maybe it's just because you played six, oh, I guess, bad teams. Uh, t- Michigan's horrible. Oklahoma has no offense, but other than, I mean, you do, you play uh, who, who's on your schedule, right? It's not Texas's fault, uh, you know, regarding that Michigan and Oklahoma look worse than what everyone thought, as well as uh, Texas is clearly, like I said, the best team in college football. They deserve to be number one. This is a clear contender for me. Yeah, I agree. I think the I put up the question on the Texas channel whether this rushing game is good enough to win the national championship right now. And I don't think it is that good. Now, if they did what they did versus Oklahoma, who is a good defensive team, where they rush for like 170 yards, then yes, they are good enough to, uh, running the ball. My only question is, is that this defense is good. That is not the question. My question is how good? Are they good? Are they great? Are they elite? And I think that's going to be answered this weekend. This is by far the biggest test they faced offensively versus Georgia. Georgia, to me, has finally found someone in uh, Dylan Bell to where that is their number one option, in my opinion. We'll see how he's using this game. Uh, do I think Georgia's a great offensive team compared to the rest of college football? No, but they're definitely miles ahead of anyone we played. I mean, Oklahoma and Michigan are anemic offensively. They're garbage offensively. They're pretty good. Oklahoma's very good on defense. Michigan's pretty good on defense, but they're bad uh, offensively. Uh, so, yes, I do think Texas is a contender to win the SEC and we'll see how they fare this week versus Georgia. Before we get into the next team, let's jump into your comments. Tony, Texas A&M ain't making it. I mean, just ba- I really think based off schedule, there's a really good chance Texas and Texas A&M face back-to-back weeks uh, in the regular season and then the SEC championship game. That's my Yeah, opinion. Texas A&M and, and Arkansas are probably the two teams I wouldn't want to play, and then playing them at their house is – is going to be even tougher, especially Texas A&M. That is a really good football team. If you're not watching Texas a- or if you don't think Texas a and is a good team, I don't know what else to tell you. That is a very well-coached football team. They have top 10 talent. Uh, A&M's definitely – they should be undefeated. Uh, they, they gave away the Notre Dame game, but they are getting better and better. That's They're a re- legitimate team for sure. I got it on mute, so let me know when they talk about a real game, Georgia versus <laughs> Texas. We'll get to there, I promise. We got four big games to talk about. That is one of them. Uh, Tony also says SG1 should join the stream. Hey, he's welcome anytime. You just got to let us know. Uh, Texas man, you talk about how Georgia will win, and Tyler talk. We, you know what? We can do that when we get to that game. We, we can do that. Tony, you got to keep up with the videos. I kind of already did that today. Uh, Andrew... Didn't even catch the what it eight and four SMH. Yeah, Texas eight and four. But you said A and M because you already know the joke there. Yeah, <laughs> sure didn't. Uh, okay, let's move on then. Contenders and pretenders. So 
Let's start out with the team Texas plays this week or start back. Tyler, what do you have to say about Georgia? Yeah, uh, this is really for for me, uh, well, really for Georgia, that is. If Georgia goes in this game and loses this game, doesn't matter what the score is, I don't think they're going to make it to the SEC title. You still got to play Tennessee and Ole Miss, and you play them back-to-back, one on the road. Um, by the way, I've been saying this a couple times, this is Georgia's fifth straight road game that happened to be a primetime game. So uh, you already know the team that Georgia plays is going to go all out again. Um, but Georgia's still a contender as if – I don't know if they can win this weekend, to be honest with you. Um, but if they lose this game to Texas, I don't see them making it to the SEC title game, in my opinion. I could be wrong, but that's just my opinion. For the playoffs, they're sure for heck it, they are a contender. Um, for the SEC title, I, I don't know if George is good enough this year. Yeah, so it, you're right about that. I because this game hasn't happened yet, I'm going to say they are a contender and they can win the SEC yeah. championship game, but they have to win this game. Uh, I completely agree. If they lose this game, they are going to be out of the SEC championship race and they better win out because if they lose another game, then they will not be in the college football playoff. I don't think a nine and three George is probably getting in at that point because you would have lost to, I mean, unless that win is versus Tennessee and Tennessee wins this week versus Alabama. And I just don't see it happening. But then again, I do think one nine and three team this year will get in. I just don't know where it's going to be from. So maybe they could, but this is a big game for Georgia in multiple ways. I still think talent wise, you have to say contender and definitely a contender for the national championship. Let's go to, and this one might be controversial. It's going to be interesting. Let's go to Alabama, Tyler. What do you think about them? Oh, yeah, they're definitely a contender. I know a lot. Listen, I don't know what's going on at Alabama these past two weeks. There's something internal going on right there. But the football team themselves, if they can get over that hurdle, they are a legit national championship quality team. We saw it against Georgia. People call it a fluke. But, no, that was Alabama football for you. That's Kalen DeBoer. He is – he might be the best coach in college football when it comes to big games. Just see, look what he's done in the past. The problem with Kalen DeBoer is what we've already seen. He, lost, he loses to Vanderbilt. He, when he was at Fresno State, he lost to Hawaii and, I believe, Utah State. That was a year – that was 2021, a year they almost beat Oregon. And then the year they asked uh, – they actually beat top 15 UCLA, who beat LSU. But, uh, yeah, they, they had that good signature win. They were the best team in the Mountain West. They found a way to lose it. Go to 2022, guess what happens? He's a, the head coach for Washington. And – he loses to one in five Arizona State, and then he lost to a four in four or four and three UCLA team, got destroyed. This is just what he's done, unfortunately, in the past. So if if Bama can get over the ex or the internal things, the the mental things going on over there, they are for sure contenders. As well as their schedule, once they get past Tennessee, they do go on the road against LSU. But I really do think at the wor at worst they go one and one. It's if they can beat all these bad teams. Um, they're playing down to their competition. That's Kalen uh, DeBoer for you. I'm still going to go with contender, though. Yeah, I agree. They are contender. I don't think I don't think they they can win a national championship with how bad that defense is, though. Unless that just miraculously halfway through the year, this defense starts to get better. I just don't see it happening. I mean, they're really bad on defense. Like, Lenora Sellers had his best game versus Alabama. And it was on the road coming off Vanderbilt, where that should have been a ass chewing of the century to get your defense to play better, and it just didn't happen. Like they, I mean, they could have lost that game rather easily. Um, and like you said, they do play up and down a competition, something they never did under Nick Saban. Uh, always played to the standard that he talked about. So I do think they can win the SEC championship or get there at least. I don't think they can win the national championship, but. Yeah, uh, it's kind of weird. I think this week is kind of an elimination game as well with Alabama and Tennessee. Whoever that loses that game is not going to be in the SEC championship game. Uh, and it's going to be very interesting that both those teams have weird flaws. I mean, Nico, we already talked about. Then you have that Alabama secondary. And then on the opposite side, can Jalen Milrow make enough plays versus that really good Tennessee defense? So it's going to be a very fun game to watch. I do not know which way it's going to go. We do have to pick games here, so when we get there, we will talk about that. And speaking of Tennessee, let's talk about them. Do you think they are an SEC championship contender or not? Unfortunately, no. Um, 
which sucks for me because I was very high on Tennessee. I had them going 10 and two, by the way, in the, in the off season, I had them losing to Georgia and Arkansas. So they could legit, they could still do that and prove me right. But with how Nico's been playing, uh, their defense is way better than I thought I will say, but with how Nico's been playing, he, he's really the missing piece. He's, he's the issue. Unfortunately, it's not, it's not just the tackles there or you want Tennessee fans will blame the offensive line. It's Nico missing some of these wide open throws being hot, too high, too low, making the wrong read. He's kind of been the issue. Now their defense is elite. They have a top 15 defense in college football. That itself is going to keep them in every single game. Unfortunately, I I think they're going to go nine and three. So I'm going to go pretender. Yeah, I agree. I had him at nine and three going into the year, and I think that's what they're going to go. I do think they're a pretender unless Nico is somehow able to have like a renaissance in the second half and turn into the guy he's supposed to be, or at least somewhat of the guy he's supposed to be, be good. Uh, I think then they can make the SEC championship game, but I don't see that happening. At this point, guys, I think through six games, you're basically about as complete as you're going to be. I, are there little things you can change and little differences that you can make going down later in the year? Yes, but you're not going to get much better from this. You're like a 95% complete product of what you see. So I think Tennessee's a pretender. I don't think they're going to make the SEC championship game. I don't think they can win the SEC championship game if they did get there. And I do not see them as a national championship contender. That, Like you said, that defense is national championship caliber, but they don't even have like a good enough quarterback to – win the big game honestly that's my biggest thing i just don't think he's going to make enough throws in these big time games to win him the game whereas the team they're playing this week i think jalen Bodo is going to make enough plays with his arm he's the second best passer in the sec efficiency wise uh to win this game versus tennessee where i think nico's probably going to make a mistake or two or you know run out of bounds on fourth down <laughs> with the game on the line so whatever I, I i just don't understand what's happened there but we're gonna have a little bit of fun here i have two teams one of one of these teams I bet no one would even think of, but I have Arkansas. What do you think about that? Well, yeah, Arkansas is, uh, like I said, I said this coming in, Ar this was Sam Pittman's year to prove people that he's still a good coach or at least a decent coach. And obviously he had that win against uh, Tennessee. Uh, he should have beaten Oklahoma State and he debatably could have beaten Texas A&M. Um, you know, the, the game against Oklahoma State is typical Sam Pittman, right? This is what he's done in the past. He loses these close games. In fact, he's uh, as well. Yeah, shout out to Tony. Yeah, Bobby Petrino has been huge for Arkansas as well. But this is this is just what Sam Pittman does, like the Oklahoma State game. That is a typical Sam Pittman coach game. Coached terribly. But – he upset Tennessee, came out clutch with the defense. I will I will say I was way wrong about that defense. Uh, that defense is actually really good for Arkansas. Shout out to Arkansas. They got a great front seven, really. And that, that's a shocker to me, um, especially for this season. But, yeah, Arkansas is a legitimate uh, – they're a sleeper team. They play LSU this week. They could definitely beat LSU at home. Don't forget, they still play Texas. That's going to be a tough game for Texas, especially with Texas' schedule, which looks a lot tougher now than what it did in the uh, preseason, that's for sure, with Vanderbilt right after Georgia and then at uh, Arkansas, or maybe you get someone else before that game. But but the point is, uh, Texas' schedule is just a lot tougher. Can Arkansas win another game they shouldn't? I still think yes. So I, I think Arkansas could definitely get to 8-4 and four because the schedule is relatively tricky. They're definitely not a contender, in my opinion, for the SEC title, but I think they are a sleeper team to maybe pull another upset. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I think if they won the games they were supposed to win, they could have easily won that Texas A&M game. Uh, they could have beat Oklahoma State. They could be undefeated right now. They really could be, and if they were undefeated right now, I actually think they could make the SEC championship game. Obviously, one of those was out of common, so it doesn't matter, but yeah, the AM game is probably going to be a tiebreaker. This week versus LSU would definitely be a tiebreaker. So I agree with you. I think they're going to beat someone they quote unquote shouldn't. I think it's going to be either Texas, LSU. I believe they there's another big game on the schedule too. They play Old Miss. Yep. Uh, okay. Definitely. Yeah. I think there's a possibility for that. I think they'll win one of those three games, but I don't think it's going to be enough to get the SEC championship. You'd have to win all three of those games. I don't see that happening. Uh, I mean, it could. And Sam Pittman is, I made, an, again, another video about this, about talking about he is as good as his coordinators are. His coordinators are fantastic this year, and that's why he's so good. When they were good in 2021, it was sort of the same thing with Kendall Bryles running the offense. So 
Sam Pittman is a solid coach and he's doing a solid job at Arkansas. I think they're probably going to end up going eight and four. So that would be a really good year, seeing as their over under win total on the year was five and a half. I don't see them getting into the SEC championship game, though, unless they pull out multiple upsets along the way. And then we both agree on this one. We can make it quick if you want. Missouri, that will be the last team we talk about. I'll let you jump on that first. Yeah, it's um they're a, they're a pretender unfortunately. They don't have number one they're not a very talented team. Now they are relatively talented for a Missouri team, not an SEC team, for a Missouri team. They are incredibly well coached uh with Eli Drinkwitz. But they don't have enough stigma and they don't have a leader like they did with Schrader last year. To, to you know to run the table uh now they benefited really well after next week they have no one else they play they play i guess at south carolina oh well, uh, yeah they play at south carolina that's going to be their toughest game so they could sneak themselves at 10 and 2 and get into the playoffs and maybe even get into the sec title the problem is they lost to texas a&m and more than likely alabama so for me this is still a pretender team um, I just, I personally, I hope that I hate to be like this. I hope this team doesn't end up 10 and two and making it to the playoffs. That would just be a wasted spot. Yeah. I kind of agree. They are horrendous defensively. We saw that versus Texas A&M uh, and then offensively, they don't play to their strengths. Like I'm going to keep saying this, the uh, why they do not force feed the ball to the guy that's going to be either the first or second wide receiver off the board in the NFL draft is crazy to me. They've never had a wide receiver up to this caliber other than Jeremy Macklin, and they just seem to ignore him. They give Theo Weiss more opportunities, which doesn't make any sense. Brady Cook is a nice player. I think, honestly, he reminds me a lot of Max Duggan, maybe a little bit better of a passer, but they're pretty damn similar, honestly. And then the offensive line, they just, I believe, benched Caden Green in the game versus UMass. I mean, that's all you need to know there. That guy came over from Oklahoma, big time transfer. And then you bench him on the road versus UMass. So no, this is not a um, contender. I had him at eight and four going into the season with this crappy schedule. I think they'll finish slightly better than that. They're probably going to end up nine and three, but still that's, I mean, they could end up eight and four. I would not shock me if Oklahoma beat them. That's a rivalry game. Oklahoma will play up a little bit. And let's be honest here. Yes. Oklahoma's offense is bad. They've been able to, Auburn and Missouri probably have similar defenses. I think they're going to be able to put up similar amount of stats when they do play Missouri. So it's going to be very interesting. I don't think they're a contender, but that that will be an interesting game to watch out for. 